God, who raised up St. John the Baptist to make ready a nation fit for Christ the Lord, give your people, we pray, the grace of spiritual joys and direct the hearts of all the faithful into the way of salvation and peace. In your Son's precursor, we praise your great glory, for you consecrated him for a singular honor among those born of women. His birth brought great rejoicing. Even in the womb he leapt for joy at the coming of human salvation. He alone of all the prophets pointed out the Lamb of Redemption, and to make holy the flowing waters, he baptized the very author of baptism and was privileged to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his blood. Grant, we pray, that your family may walk in the way of salvation and may come safely to the one John John foretold, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Gospel according to Luke. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah, and he had a wife of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren and both were advanced in years. Now while he was serving as priest before God when his division was on duty, according to the custom of the priesthood, it fell to him by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, And many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great before the Lord, and he shall drink no wine nor strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the sons of Israel to the Lord their God, 
and he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. from the prophet Isaiah. Come forward, come forward, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her, but her warfare is ended, but her iniquity is pardoned, but, he has but she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry, and I said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, 
and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arm. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. From the Gospel according to Mark, the beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before my face, who shall prepare thy way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And there went out to him all the country of Judea and all the people of Jerusalem. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed clothed with camel's hair and had a leather girdle round his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit.
from a sermon of St. Augustine. John is the voice, but the Lord is the Word who was in the beginning. John is the voice that lasts for a time. From the beginning, Christ is the Word who lives forever. Take away the Word, the meaning, and what is the voice? Where there is no understanding, there is only a meaningless sound. The voice without the word strikes the ear, but it does not build up the heart. However, let us observe what happens when we first seek to build up our hearts. When I think about what I am going to say, the word or message is already in my heart. When I want to speak to you, I look for a way to share with your heart what is already in mine. In my search for a way to let this message reach you so that the word already in my heart may find a place also in yours, I use my voice to speak to you. The sound of my voice brings the meaning of the word to you and then passes away. The word which the sound has brought to you is now in your heart, and yet it is still also in mine. When the word has been conveyed to you, does not the sound seem to say, the word ought to grow and I should diminish? The sound of the voice has made itself heard in the service of the word and has gone away as though it were saying, my joy is complete. Let us hold on to the word. We must not lose the word conceived inwardly in our hearts. Do you need proof that the voice passes away, but the divine word remains? Where is John's baptism today? It served its purpose, and it went away. Now it is Christ's baptism that we celebrate. It is in Christ that we all believe. We hope for salvation in him. This is the message the voice cried out. Because it is hard to distinguish word from voice, even John himself was thought to be the Christ. The voice was thought to be the word. But the voice acknowledged what it was, anxious not to give offense to the word. I am not the Christ, he said, nor Elijah, nor the prophet. And the question came, who are you then? He replied, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. The voice of one crying in the wilderness is the voice of one breaking the silence. Prepare the way for the Lord, he says, as though he were saying, I speak out in order to lead him into your hearts. But he does not choose to come where I lead him unless you prepare the way for him.
from the Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came for testimony to bear witness to the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness to the light. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. He was, not, he was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. John bore witness to him and cried, This was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks before me, for he was before me. And from his fullness have we all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only Son who is in the bosom of the Father, he has made him known. Please be seated. John the Baptist gets a starring role in the opening of John's Gospel, and indeed in all of the Gospels. It's not enough that he's the great forerunner of Christ, a second Elijah. It's not enough that his own birth is surrounded by angelic prophecies and mysterious signs, or that he's the cousin of the Messiah, or that he enjoys the privilege of baptizing the Son of God and pointing him out when he arrives. John, we are told, bore witness to the light so that all might believe through him. That's a pretty bold claim. If asked who our faith depends on, I'm not sure that John the Baptist is the person we think of as key to our salvation. Yes, we'd all put Jesus first, I hope, for obvious reasons, and without his mother's yes, he would never have been born, so we think she's pretty essential too. But thinking about how the faith actually comes down to us, we recognize the role of the apostles and their successors and the missionaries who brought the faith to our own lands. We think of those who brought us into the church, whether that was our parents when we were children or others later on in life. We think of those who taught us the faith those who prepared us to receive the sacraments, of the inspirational preachers we might have heard, or the great writers we may have read. All of these are the ones on whom we think our faith depends, not John the Baptist. But that's how he would have had it, I suppose. He must increase, I must decrease. John almost disappears, except during these weeks of Advent, when we're reminded that his message is still around. How can it be that we all believe through him? Well, if we fast forward through chapter one of John's gospel, we're told that the first followers of Christ started out as followers of John. The next day again, John was standing with two of his disciples and he looked at Jesus as he walked and said, behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. John did more than just warm the crowds up for the coming of the Messiah. He prepared disciples for him and handed them over to him when he came. All the way through the Gospels, we see that our Lord doesn't match his disciples' expectations of him. And perhaps we can wonder whether they even would have followed him at all if John hadn't first pointed him out to them. And these apostles we do recognize 
as essential links in how the faith comes to us. And so we see that it is through John that we believe, whether we recognize that or not. St. John Henry Newman said of his own vocation, God has created me to do him some definite service. He has committed some work to me which he has not committed to another. I am a link in a chain, a bond of connection between persons. Those words apply equally well to John the Baptist. And while John understood the importance of what he was doing, I'm not sure he ever expected to be remembered for doing it 2,000 years later on a winter's night in Oxford. We don't expect to be remembered for being foundation stones of the faith either. But those words of Newman apply to us too. Each of us has our own part to play in bringing others to Christ. The Lord be with you. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope and active in charity so that, rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen.